We're going to go on a dive to the deep sea. And anyone that's had that lovely opportunity knows that for the, about two and a half hours on the way down, it's a perfectly positively pitch black world. And we used to see the most mysterious animals out the window that you couldn't describe, these blinking lights, a world of bioluminescence like fireflies. Dr. Edith Witter, she's now at the Ocean Research and Conservation Association, was able to come up with a camera that could capture some of these incredible animals. And that's what you're seeing here on the screen. That's all bioluminescence, like I said, just like fireflies. There's a flying turkey under my <laughs> tree. <laughs> I don't I, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a geologist by training, uh, but I love that. Uh, and you see, some of, the, some of the bioluminescence they use to avoid being eaten, some they use to attract prey, but all of it, from an artistic point of view, is just positively amazing. And a lot of what goes on inside, there's a fish with glowing eyes, pulsating eyes. Some, some of the colors are designed to hypnotize these lovely patterns. And then this last one, one of my favorites, this pinwheel design, just absolutely amazing, every single dive. That's the unknown world, and today we've only explored about 3%, 3% of what's out there in the ocean. Already we found the world's highest mountains, world's deepest valleys, underwater lakes, underwater waterfalls, a lot of that we shared with you from the stage, and in a place where we thought no life at all, we find more life, we think, in diversity and density than the tropical rainforest, which tells us that we don't know much about this planet at all. There's still 97%, and either that 97% is empty or just full of surprises. But I want to jump up to shallow water now and look at some creatures that are positively amazing. The cephalopods, headfoots. As a kid, I knew them as calamari, mostly. <laughs> but this is an octopus. This is the work of Dr. Roger Hanlon at the Marine Biological Lab. And just fascinating how, how cephalopods can, with their eyes, incredible eyes, sense their surrounding, look at light, look at patterns. Here's an octopus moving across the reef, finds a spot to settle down, curls up, and then disappears into the background. Tough thing to do. In the next bit, we're going to see a couple of squid. These are squid. Now, males, when they fight, if they're really aggressive, they turn white. And these two males are fighting. They do it by bouncing their butts together, which is an interesting <laughs> concept. Now here's a male on the left and a female on the right, and now the male has managed to split his color coloration so that the female only always sees the kinder, gentler squid in him. <laughs> and the males on the opposite. <laughs> We're going to see it again. Let's take a look at it again. Watch the coloration. White on the right, brown on the left. He takes a step back, so he's keeping off the other males by splitting his body, and he comes up on the other side. Bingo. Now, I'm told that's not just a squid phenomenon with males, but I don't, I don't know if that's true. Cuttlefish. I love cuttlefish. This is a giant Australian cuttlefish, and there he is, his droopy little eyes up here. But they could do pretty amazing things, too. Here we're going to see one backing into a crevice, and, and watch, his, watch his tentacles. He just pulls them in, makes them look just like algae. Disappears right into the background. Positively amazing. Here's two males fighting. Once again, they're, they're smart enough, these cephalopods, they know not to hurt each other, but look at the patterns that they can do with their skin. Okay? Just an amazing thing. Here's an octopus. Sometimes they don't want to be seen when they move because predators can see them. And here's this, this guy actually can make himself look like a rock, and looking at his environment can actually slide across the bottom using the waves and the shadows so he can't be seen. He, does, he blends right into the, his motion blends right into the background. The moving rock trick. So we're learning lots new from the shallow water, still exploring that deep, learning lots from the shallow water. And there's a good reason why. I mean, the shallow water is full of predators. Here's a barracuda. And if you're an octopus or a cephalopod, you need to really understand how to use your surroundings to hide. In the next scene, you're going to see a nice coral bottom. And you see that an octopus would stand out very easily there if you couldn't use your camouflage, use your skin to change color and texture. Here's some algae in the foreground and an octopus. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Now, Roger spooked him, so as he took off, a cloud of ink, lands, and when he lands, the octopus says, look, I've been seen, best thing to do is get as big as I can get. That big brown makes his eye spot very big. So he's bluffing, let's do it backwards. I thought he was joking when he first showed it to me. I thought it was all graphics. So here, here it is in reverse. Watch the skin color. 
Watch the skin texture, just an amazing animal can change color and texture to match the surroundings. Watch them blend right into this algae. One, two, three. <laughs> And now he's gone, and so am I. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Traffic is a global epidemic. US traffic is creating 45% of the world's <laughs> air pollution. In the UK, time wasted in traffic costs 20 billion a year. Would you pay for cleaner air and a faster commute? Stockholm put it to a vote. I voted for it, yes. I voted for it. I vote for it. We're not old enough to vote. Vote. <laughs> we had to do something in Stockholm to improve the environment and to get a better flow in the traffic. We put a price on taking your car into the central parts of Stockholm and we call that congestion charges. If you start a system like this and it doesn't work on the first day, then you will be in big trouble. It must be perfect from day one. There are 18 entry gates to the city. Each is equipped with cameras. Pictures are taken of the rear and front license plates. These pictures are sent to a central system that identifies the license plates and makes sure that the right person pays for the right passages. One of the obstacles we overcame was the OCR, the optical character reading of the license plate. We went out to IBM's global organization and the R&D centers and find a very good software we could use. And we managed to implement it in two months' time. This is the heart of the system where all images and passages are being processed. Over 99% of all pictures are correctly identified. No, it's nice. This is how it should be all the time. Behind me you can see the traffic, and the clock is 6 p.m. Before we had the congestion charging, the traffic was chewing up at this time of the day. I think it's a good idea, because I think that we should take care of the environment in the city. The traffic went down with about 22%, and the air pollution was about 14% better. It's a huge international interest from different parts of the world, from uh, the United States, from Latin America, from China. And it's really a pressure to tell people not what we are planning to do, but what we actually have done in Stockholm. I voted for it. Yes, I did. Not my husband, so <laughs> but I did. I think he is not thinking like me for the future. I'm thinking for the children and the grandchildren.